Welcome to Uncage. Today we're speaking with Yelena Dodik. Yelena is the head of insights and strategy at the Nilo Group. We'll go through in more depth of what the Nilo Group is doing, but they believe people come first in business and have a vision of a future where companies compete primarily on the positive impact they can have on people's lives. It's a very noble goal and something that I think resonates a lot today. And so we'll go forward and talk more about that. But before we do that, Yelena, and before we talk about what you're focused on at the Nilo Group, tell us a little bit about your background and your career. I was thinking about this um, quite a bit before our call, um, Van, and um, I, I, I thought about it. I've always been in research. Research and consulting um, has always been in some shape, form, what I did or what I was involved with, um, starting with my academic roots and academic background, and then going into research and consulting firms. So I can't even... Uh, it's so many years now that I can't, I don't even want to put a number on them. It's um, it's it's quite scary, and and so when I think about that, I often say, oh well, you know, um, Yelena, it's all a bit same, same, same. But it isn't because <clears throat> when I think back and I reflect on my career, I, I think I've done so many so many things I've had I've solved so many challenges I've been involved with so many different clients I've you know as I like to call it I created magic you know almost every day and um that but you know that's that's in, in a really nutshell that's what I've done all of my professional career is research and insights well I mean research and insights has always been extremely important but I would say it seems to be a topic that's on everybody's lips these days as we think about all the data and all these powerful tools that are coming out with uh, the generative AI and elements such as that. But tell me a little bit more now about the Nilo Group and what you are working on there as the head of insights and strategy. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, Bant, you touched on some really important elements and in- you know, uh, as a professional of so many years of experience and, you know, I, I mean, quite old school, you know, I still have a notebook <laughs> and a pen. I, I'd like to think that those old rules, traditional rules still remain intact. I do use chat GPT quite a lot, I have to say. Oh, wow. I'm actually a really big fan. I don't know if I use it well or anything like that, but I'm stumbling over it and I'm and I'm working with it. And, and I think it's absolutely amazing how far we've come. And so at Nilo Group in particular, you know, we if we say we are transforming ourselves in some way, we'd like to think that we are able to transform our clients' lives, our clients' business. And so whenever we help our clients, it's not just about answering a specific question, but it's thinking more broadly about how can we help you transform whatever you're working on. So for example, um, at the moment, we're helping a client transform their short course microcred strategy. So whilst we're doing a piece of research, it does become a lot more when we think about that. And we're really partnering with them to help them really understand it, to understand the context, to understand what's changing. Another client we've recently had, um, we help them understand the segments of their customer base. But not only that, we've not come and said, here are your segments, six segments, go and run with them. We're saying, well, let's go deeper into really understanding their needs and what, you know, what triggers them, what concerns them, you know, some of those pain points tell you a lot more than what customers say they need. So we really think deeply about our clients' questions and we always um, try and transform something and help them really create change. Now, There has been in my career significant changes and transformations that I've been involved with, but they don't all have to be that. They don't all Mm -hmm. have to be that. There is a saying, uh, you know, 
from small things big grow. And I've been involved in projects that have started this small, but have become a real um, turning point for the organization and the client. So mm -hmm. we always really focus on that. <clears throat> I, you know, we always look for ways of how we can do research differently, how we can do it faster. And, and, and uh, that's really in some ways nitty gritty. We, we really focus on how can we change our clients' lives and their businesses mm -hmm. for better. Mm -hmm. and, um, now, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, certainly, as I said before, companies have thought about utilizing research. In fact, you know, it touches very personally to me. My grandfather um, worked yeah. heavily in market research in the 1960s. Yeah when it was a new concept <laughs> and you know he has many stories that he used to regale me with about how uh, his employer which was stanley tools you know he was the person who went in and said well how do you choose what tools we're selling and the sales guys would say well we just know we talk to people and they tell us but there really wasn't kind of detailed customer market research of what actually people wanted back then so things have evolved quite a bit and I'd just be curious to kind of get a sense today when you look out and when you're working with your customers, what are the topics that are really top of mind for them right now? It's a really good question. As, as you're talking about your grandfather, um, a lot of <clears throat> thoughts started popping up in my head and things to have changed and things haven't changed. And mm. we have some of the similar questions that our clients always say, well, you know, I want to um, compete better in, in, in the market. I want to, you know, surpass our competitors or, you know, my market share is not satisfactory or can you help me understand my customers? Can you help me understand their experience? And, and you know, map out those points and understand where are the pain points and what can we as an organisation do to make sure that we go around our customer and we design whatever we do, whether it's product, service or journey, that, that fits with their needs and um, we make sure they're satisfied and they're loyal and they're, you know, then uh, recommend us further. And, and so some of those elements really stay the same. Mm -hmm. I think uh, um, when I think a little bit about the times we live in, I think there is, it's almost like someone's put a blanket of uncertainty. And so, and so clients then say, well, what is going to happen? Do you know? Can you tell me? How can I um, make sure that I've gone into the future and back? So I, I understand how to bulletproof, whether it's my product, whether it's my service, whether it's my customer, whether it's my organization, how can I protect my customers from, you know, whatever's coming on. And that's a, a <clears throat> that is a, a scary bit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> As much as we would like to think that we can do that, we can do some elements of it and, and in a very pedestrian way, but we don't quite know what will happen in, you know, fast forward, maybe five years or 10 years, which has been the question the clients have been asking more mm. and more. And so what should I then be doing? Yeah. Um, and, and, and you touched on an AI, you know, um, you know, um, how, how can we integrate this? We, is there a faster way? You, you know, mm -hmm. I really need insights now. You know, I, it, it, your traditional, and you might know this from your grandfather, but traditional market research project will say, no, 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 but four to six weeks, four mm -hmm. to six weeks. We'll design yeah. it. We'll go into field. We'll pick it up. We'll do some analysis and then we'll do some nice reporting. But that doesn't go anymore. No, so, no, it so definitely it's doesn't. It's very, very difficult to think in those terms. So we really as researchers, and if I can call myself a little bit of a traditional researcher, we've got to really think fast. We've got to kind of step up. and Yeah, it's just tricky, right? I mean, I've always thought about this, Yelena, because I've done quite a bit of research myself over the years. And mm. I feel today, maybe because of the pace of change, there is such an appetite for that immediate gratification on the insight. Yeah. Like I need to know now, we need to act now, an insight to act now. Yeah. And yeah. the data pool can be so misleading, like yeah. so misleading. And 
I just find myself being really kind of like the old guy in the room a lot of times where I'm kind of like the one saying, wait a minute, let's pull in a lot more information before we kind of see this as, you know, something with meaning. Do you find yourself having to kind of be like, wait a minute, we got to look at this data correctly? 100%. I mean, we'll invite you to our meetings next event because that's what we say. And really, when I think back, I think, think the best, I don't know if the best is the right word, but the, the most actionable research was the one where we actually stood still and involved yeah. others. And we were able to absolutely define what is the challenge? Mm -hmm. What are our hypotheses? Where should we go? You know, some of those, you know, I talk about academia, but some of those, you know, uh, uh, steps that we took there back years ago are still valid because you don't want to just go and run and the, interpret some comments on social media because that is not the trustworthy way. It's a dated example, but I do remember you know, having a customer being really exercised by a tweet that had come in that was negative about their brand and they hadn't really processed that if you looked through the full conversation that the majority of the posts were actually extremely positive. Mm -hmm. But I think it's almost kind of that human personal reaction that we have is like, oh, well, if there's one bad thing, then it's all bad. And you're like, well, no, let's look at it again. Like, let's look at it in its entirety and kind of process that. But, you know, Yelena, you spent your career working in research. You're now really pushing into these new areas. Tell me, I mean, I think people that go into research have a real passion for understanding, but tell me more about what drives you. I remember um, it was a bit of a running joke with my PhD mates that whenever I would get sit down and have coffee with them, I'd be saying, but why? But why are you saying that? But why? And, and they would look, they would literally just imitate me saying this. I, I think there are a couple of elements uh, there in what drives me. I think one is certainly understanding that why. And I would naturally do it. I would do it with my uh, two sons who are 10 and 7 in an equal way that I do it with my clients over here, that I do it with my husband, with my family, you know, extended family. I do exactly, I always say, but why? Why, what, you know, why would you be wanting that? What's influencing you there? So I think there is a natural um, curiosity there. But also um, when, <laughs> I, I think when I think back the best moments for me were those where I saw clients carrying our reports under the underarm in our meetings yeah. and I would go wow that must have been a really helpful report yeah. <laughs> or um, one of the bigger uh, transformations that I've done in my professional life is I when I speak to the whole organization yeah. about insight and not only one year but the second year but the third year and they all know that what's coming and they know what I'm talking about and they understand at this point driver analysis they understand what it means to look at their performance and competitor performance and they they get it mm -hmm. and I stand there and I present it and I absolutely love it. There is nothing better than that. And, and, you know, when you think back and you think how much money and time organizations invest in products, in mm -hmm. services, in marketing, in ads, and you look back and you think research is only a tiny, wincy, bincy bit of that. Yeah. Why not do it great? Yeah. Why not have that insight that will, you know, transform, create magic, make you even better? And, and um, yeah, that's, it's, uh, I think it's a very powerful tool. I think research, if done well, anyone can do research, anyone, and, and it's fine. Mm -hmm. And you can get any research report. You can go online and say, what do consumers want in education? And you, you're going to get something. Yeah. But, 
to do it really well, to have that intimate knowledge of your client, their objectives or what, what they're like, what they want is where it's at. And I yeah. find that challenge very satisfactory. Very yeah, satisfactory. I think it's excellent. And the way you described it is perfect. It's funny because anybody who started a business has an insight that drives the creation of that business. And the ongoing research, I think, is really part of that story of making sure that it's commercially viable, that it's relevant, that it's culturally relevant and can grow and evolve with the times. But I mean, with that idea of growing with the times, you know, Elena, we find ourselves here in a, another interesting year, <laughs> 2023. Wow. I mean, I really thought things might get easier, but things keep kind of like rolling along here. When you look out over the next, let's say 18 months, what's in the docket for you guys? I think it, it is a little bit scary to think <laughs> About the next 18 months, it's, um, I, I might have mentioned this a little bit earlier, it's, um, you know, crystal ball, we'd like it, but we don't have it. But, you know, um, how, how do we make sense of what's happening um, is really difficult. But what we, you know, you, what I, I think the times that are uncertain and, and, and the times that are like these, the, I think the best thing that you could possibly do is to look in and understand, well, what can I do to change? Mm -hmm. So I think that's what we do at Neil. That's what I do for myself. And I say, you know, I'm absolutely passionate about what I do and I'm happy to help. I understand challenges. I understand, you know, time, AI, trust, cost, and, and I'm going to work with you to make sure that that's right. But we, you know, at, at Nilo, we say, well, let's hinge everything on purpose, right? So whatever we do here, you know, it connects to something more, connects to something bigger in your organization. It has a, um, a, it has a power to unite external, internal, to get everyone on the same page. Um, but, but another thing we can do, I think, and, and I've been working a lot on this is, to be a bit idealistic, you know, mm. and I think it's dangerous, but I think in times like this, it can be very helpful because you going to want to be better and do better and it's hard. Mm -hmm. But if you stay true to, to that, then you are creating that. You are pushing it on to other people, to your clients, to your workmates, to, you know, and as much as you might sit back and cry at night, <laughs> no, <laughs> No, I think that kind of having some form of like a true north or really a solid sense of kind of mm. the pillars of who you are and what you stand for and where you're going is absolutely critical. Yelena, it's been amazing talking with you. I think we could talk for hours, but if someone wanted to learn more about what you and the Nilo team are working on, where's the best place to find you? Um, the best place will be on our website. And I think, uh, so take it from there. The Nilo Group has, a, I think, a very powerful vision of the future where companies compete primarily on the positive impact they can have on people's lives. And clearly, insights and really pushing past that basic research into those actionable insights that drive strategy is a real critical part of that story. And we need to kind of dig deeper and dig faster based on this conversation <laughs> yeah. from Yelena to keep up with the iterations that we see in our world and society today. Yelena, thank you so much for being on the NK show. And we look forward to having you back. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye.